All right, guys. Happy Saturday. Happy weekend, everybody. Glad to be with you today. My name is Carlos Garcia, founder and CEO of Gar Capital. You are have you are now locked into our Gar Capital YouTube channel. Glad to be with you again, as always, every weekend to recap the week. We got some stuff to get uh, prepared for, a lot of stuff to get prepared for, and a lot of stuff to talk about this past week. A lot of chop. Let's go over it together. And uh, if this is your first time here, make sure to hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. Comment with any of your questions here to help in any way I can. Thank you so much again for taking the time out of your day to join me. It is December 9th on a Saturday, uh, about 2.51 p.m. Uh, the week is over and kind of a choppy one. First week of December in the book. So I want to go ahead and start with the week in review. I kind of wrote down exactly the outline of how I want to do it. Sometimes I kind of get lost into uh, certain minutia into uh, what's important and what's not important. So I wanted to make sure I got that done. Um, I brought up this menu here because I wanted to show the difference of how the week went. Five-day performance, here we go. So here's your five-day performance of the major indexes. Uh, IWM leading the way, 1%. NASDAQ up 0.45%. The S&P up 0.14%. And the Dow actually was red this week. So. Um, other than IWM, small caps, which we traded in futures this week, uh, the Russell, uh, that was pretty much the only thing that really outperformed. Uh, we were correct about the rotation, but exactly, you know, 60 or is it uh, 55 basis points uh, isn't exactly something to be too excited for on that rotation. NASDAQ still continued to go higher. So that's where we were uh, for this week in terms of the S&P 500 bringing up Bitcoin uh, this uh, afternoon. Bitcoin is now at 43,961. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but uh, let's go ahead. We got exactly the last five days done. Let's see exactly what has changed the past couple of weeks or past week. And the answer is right, not really much. Um, some good news, obviously, in terms of the S&P 500 futures. Let's take a look at the weekly. The weekly, we are now closed above this main trend line. So again, I have this line here, this line of support. I know it's a ton of lines on the screen since we look at it pretty much on the daily. What we need to do is clear this July high, which is right around 46.22 on futures or so, maybe 46.20. Uh, SPY did hit a new 52 week high. So again, we are only $20 away from all time highs on SPY. Ooh, are we close. We're getting there. We got three more weeks to get there. Take a look at SPX. This is the S&P 500 spot. I still got that wick kind of above the wick high of March 2022, 46.41. We're above that trend line as well. So some good things to see. Let's take a look at equal weight S&P. Has equal weight S&P shown us anything? Yes, we settled above that trend line that we talked about. We're above the 200. We're above the 20. We're above the 50. We're above the 100. All major weekly moving averages. Still need a little more. Get me to 156. Again, RSP is one of our top 10 stocks of 2023. If you are interested in that video, again, that is in our YouTube channel. Uh, if you'd like, I'll go ahead and include the link uh, as we revisited the top 10 stocks of 2023. I'll put that in the comments once this video is up and running. I also wanna welcome a lot of our new members uh, to the Options Group Masterclass, also the Forex and the Future side, and even those who just joined the um, Live Market blog. Thank you for joining. Thank you for giving us your vote of confidence to join Guard Capital. Even if you're not paying for it right now, let's say you're just doing the blog, we hope that any information that we give you can assist you with your path to uh, learning this business, the stock market, day trading, futures trading, et cetera. So uh, for those who are brand new this week, do not let it be an indictment of how it works with us here. Uh, yes, this week was a choppy week, a rather choppy one, like we talked about. So with that being said, I wanna go and bring up SPY on a five day basis. And you can see, yes, break it out of the five day. Yes, we closed toward the tail end of it or the top end of the range, good news. But again, was very difficult really. The thing that gave us this boost was Friday's non-farm payroll report, which came in higher than expected. And the reason that we initially fell was the fact that, you know, again, a tighter labor market increases inflation. It always has. More people working, more people consume, Harder people to find jobs, you got to increase wages, inflation goes up. 
that's the deal when it comes economically speaking. So if you were somebody, um, I guess, for example, is not cheering this uh, labor report, it's because you want the balance or the equilibrium in the labor market to at least come ahead where, you know, wages are not to the point that it's inflationary uh, to the point where we need to keep rates where they are or actually increase rates. The talk next year is is cutting rates. Again, my thesis is that I think we're going to be higher for longer. I don't think we get any cuts right away unless the labor market really takes a hit. And as we saw with the labor market numbers that we just had on Friday, we'll go ahead and bring up the number quickly here. Let's see here. Uh, we had non-farm payroll, 199,000 jobs added. Again, next week, that'll be uh, next month, that'll probably be revised either up or down. Unemployment rate at 3.7%. Uh, regardless of uh, you know what your view is in terms of economics, that's a pretty good number. Uh, that's not a number you'll see in a recession, let's just say. But again, things can change rather quickly. But again, a very strong labor market indeed. So that's where we are. So let's go over, uh, that was the week in review. Let's go over the trades this week. And it wasn't much. We had one. Uh, QQQ puts ending this week. And the reason that we went very, very conservative this week was the fact that on non-farm payroll weeks, we don't do our best like we talked about many times. We, we went over the weeks that we do well. So I want to go over that here in a second. So again, that went to red. I'm going to go ahead and uh, review the actual trade. Let's go to QQQ. And again, I drew some lines to show you guys exactly what I was looking for, what the thesis was when we actually shorted. Again, we got below 384, we got to 382.66, bounced toward the tail end of the session, faded again mid, uh, during uh, pre-market. Tuesday we soared, and then we kind of pulled back again. And then we never really broke the highs of the Monday open highs until Thursday. Even Wednesday, we popped up very, very nicely first thing in the morning, and then we rejected rather quickly that trend line. So keep an eye on this yellow line here. Then Thursday, we got broke out of it, chopped a little bit. Then NFP hit. The market didn't know what to do with that labor number. And then we just went ahead and went higher, uh, even with the dollar going higher, even with yields going higher. It, it's just one of those things where buying is, an, is, a, is the thing now. Uh, everyone wants to go long. And that's very difficult to short in a bull market. So you could see now we kind of had that descending uh, triangle and then we broke out of it, used that 20 day, which we broke below it three times. And again, that's kind of our momentum indicator, but we we held on pretty firm, got to 392.17. The question that remains on QQQ is how high can we go? How high can we go? Can we get to 408? That is the all time high that we had back in November of 2022, just one short year ago uh, this month. How about that? So um, again, like I've been saying, I expected the market to go higher. Uh, again, it's no secret that, you know, me being a permable, but when the actual market is showing us that Monday that we were going to pull back and maybe get a little rotation, again, IWM did go higher, but we didn't trade IWM. We traded, we traded RTY. So if we traded IWM this week, what have we done better? Let's just say, probably not. If we would have went long IWM, possibly above 185, we only closed at 187. The best we got was 187.92. So the good news that I'm very proud of this week is that we didn't push the envelope. It wasn't needed. We had one, QQQ, didn't work out, but you know what, that's just one. And then we can see what we do next week. So uh, like I said on the uh, market recap for our members is that you know if we have a flat tire, let's not slash the other threes just to make them equal. We don't need to push the gun either. So that's where we are uh, in terms of the market in uh, this week in terms of trading. So 0 for 1 doesn't feel good, but I take a little solace to the fact that it's just one. We can make this up next week, which I fully intend to doing. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the big week data. And none of this was surprising. Non-farm payroll, 62% went loss with an 0 in 1 week. So you imagine how tough that's been for us to trade. Same thing with the short weeks. You know, Christmas is coming uh new year's is coming so again we need to be very careful we have an fomc week this week we're going to go over that here in a second uh we also have an fomc week this week opex this week and cpi so kind of you know balance beam here you know fomc we don't do that hot Op opex day we do okay but cpi weeks we crush it so which one is it going to be this week that's the fun part of trading is that we don't know what's going to happen but we'll be ready for anything 
Uh, in terms of what's open, I want to go over them together. Shopify, 77 calls. Got those options open. Uh, filled those a lot this past week. And look at this. It's just chop. It's just chop. And I still like it to the upside on Shopify. Again, you could see the daily holding that 20-day. Still holding this previous break breakout of July as support. We're looking for 77. What we're really looking for here is this gap to fill right around 83. So, you know, if we get a little bit more, you know, a little bit more of some juice on this thing, you know, maybe Amazon does well or, or you know, we get some good retail sales numbers that's coming out this week as well. We're going to go over that and uh, we can get to 77.93 first. That'll get us to the March highs of 2022. And then we have a gap fill at 83.80. Shopify can move. Shopify was green on Friday. So pretty good. Still looks great. The only thing I'm afraid of is that we may run out of time. Uh, we do have five days, but we have a lot of catalysts coming. So I still like Shopify. I know it looks pretty bad now. I think I'm down to like 77%, 78% on it. Pain in the ass, I know, but uh, this is what it is. Uh, trading is waiting. The other one that we did is Mara. And Mara actually is about a penny away from, oh, about a penny away from in the money. Six cents away from in the money. We have the 17 calls for next week. Let's go and take a look how Mara did this past week. And Mara has been a name that, we have been trading uh, with Bitcoin. So again, yes, I, I can't sit here and say, yeah, we told everyone to buy at 20,000. We actually told everyone around 18,000 on, on Bitcoin back in July of last year. So it's, it's not like we haven't been bullish Bitcoin. And it's very nice to see that Bitcoin is going higher. But in the options market, there really isn't much to trade when it comes to Bitcoin. We don't have an ETF for it, but you have to use the you know, those that that uh, trade that actually have our Bitcoin centric Mara Coinbase Riot. Again, these are what we call the Bitcoin proxies. We can trade proxies or themes around something. Let's say if we want to trade oil, we can trade Exxon Mobil, Chevron. There isn't a stock that's called oil <laughs> that doesn't exist. You know, tech stocks. You just don't have a, a ticker called tech. Uh, yes, you have the tech ETF. Yes, you have Qs, but it's your job to kind of figure out, you know, the breakdowns of what are the proxies that I'm looking for? What stocks will move based on certain market events, whether it's Bitcoin going higher, inflation going higher, uh, oil going higher, uh, metals going higher. You need to find a list of some of the names that you want to watch. So again, if you are interested in that list, I can make you guys one. Comment below on the comment section. I'll get you a, a list breaking down within five minutes. But again, that's very, very important to find out what stocks will move based on what certain market events. Yes, there is uh, stocks that you could trade for even the VIX if you want, VXX or VXY. There's tons of stuff out there. Gasoline, if you want to trade gasoline, there's gasoline stocks out there that you could trade, obviously, silver, copper. You name it, you name the theme, they got something out there for you. But I digress. Back to Mara. Again, a name that we have hit 10 times this year because we have been bullish on Bitcoin really since then. And this is all we can really trade other than Coinbase. And Coinbase is a little more expensive. So Mara's on the cheaper side. We kind of know exactly what we're doing in terms of this stock. Let's go back to it. Uh, I'm going to go back to the stocks that we trade. Again, we, we uh, record everything that we do, obviously, so we can look back and see what we did right and what we did wrong. Uh, Shopify, we're one for one this year. Uh, QQQ this year, for you know that's only the second loss for QQQ. Now we're 10 out of 12 from it. So... QQQ, we did pretty well the past year. It's still one of the better performers that we've used. Uh, but you could see Mara, 8 out of 10. You know, we've done very well. About 80% hit rate trading that name. Uh, Pelantir being another, Tesla, Qs, and all that good stuff. So what we're trying to do towards the end of the year is to focus on the names we've done well on. Because we kind of understand what to expect with these names. Mara takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. But uh, I think we're going to be uh, rewarded with it. So let's take a look here on... Uh, on Mara the past five days. And I'm gonna go and break it down to the past 30 days. This is 10 days. Friday, you could see that big boost. Right here is when Bitcoin started to move, when we got above 40 grand. And then that was that gap up on Sunday. And then we pulled back on Monday. So if we get a gap up on Monday, let's say Bitcoin source to 44, 45, 46,000 by Monday, let's just say. Don't be surprised team that you get a pullback rather quickly. And then you get that little bit of a boost. So again, we're more than likely probably going to get chopped. But again, if we see pre-market is up 7, 8, 9%, just like we saw this past Monday, we're going to have to take that first thing in the morning, 
or you can go ahead and take half, or you can just leave a runner, or you can just let it wait for a little bit. Again, just watch it, Bitcoin. Again, these kind of gap ups get sold. It never filled that gap here on the 30 minute, but you could see it did bounce rather nicely. So it needs a little bit of patience here on name like Mariso, but we know what to expect when we're trading. This is more for the new guys uh, who haven't traded this name. So again, don't let QQQ be an indictment of what we do. 0 for 1 is very rare for us. So that's what happened. So uh, we went over what's open so far. We went the weekend review. So now let's go ahead and go over to one of uh, the better segments I'm going to start. Where Carlos was wrong and where Carlos was right. Let's go to where Carlos was wrong. QQQ. Thought to myself that we would get a rotation out of Qs and get a pullback. Maybe to around here, this gap fill that I was looking for, around 378.64. We got pretty close on Monday, but the resiliency of this market just said, nope, the pain trade is higher. So a breakout on Qs, I thought we would get a fill the gap uh, uh, situation to 378.57 and then went ahead and bounced. But we did not get that where Carlos was wrong. Where Carlos was right, IWM still outperforming. Outperformed this week, and I still expect once we break 188 for a little more room. And I do like small caps all the way up to 195 possibly even 197 that gets us back to our july highs qqq is near july highs sap is up near july highs russell is coming up next so again very very important that's where at least we were right but uh, we did rty and we got out on the right time thankfully so we did get something right there Let's take a look at tlt bonds and the reason i want to watch bonds specifically is because if rates continue to fall that's where things get better for tech over small caps. That's where you're just gonna get more momentum for that. So I wanna go ahead and bring up a, let's see if a weekly here works. There we go. Uh, is there any trend line here that we need to be concerned with? Nope, we're too high. We're way, way high from that. So TLT, let's go and bring up a daily chart on TLT. So I went ahead and drew this trend line here and you could see that we broke out of that and then we still broke down. So again, we still have a lot more to go. We need to get to 108.34. In order for TLT to really start cooking, and I still think we have more upside. This is the 20 year bond, uh, bond pricing, 97.63. If we can put that alert there, we traded TLT before and it didn't work out, but maybe for those who want to swing trade it for a quick six, 7% gain, 97.63, you can target 100 and then on to 108.34. You keep the stop relatively tied to around 93 or so. Uh, so TLT, I still expect more room. Let's take a look, let's take a look at TNX, which is the 30 year, uh, oh, excuse me, the 10 year bond yield. And the 200 day is a stone's throw away. Uh, 4.029%, that's what we're looking for. What might get us to that lower level? This is where I wanna segue. So. We're gonna go ahead and start talking about economic data. Yes, my favorite. We have a 10 year bond auction at 1 p.m. on Monday. So expect uh, you know TLT, expect TNX to move. We also have CPI on Tuesday. The expectation on a month over month is 0.3% core on the core side. The regular CPI is expecting 0.0, zero inflation. And in the year to date basis, 3.1%. We're finally at 3%. Remember I said, uh, about a couple of months ago, if we get to that three handle on CPI, we're going to go higher. 3.1 is the forecast. Imagine the short squeeze if you start getting to 2.9 and below. That's what you're going to watch for. We're not looking for expectations event because that's not going to get us anywhere. We need better than expected for us to really give the reason to buy or for more upside. 30-year bond auction, the expectation, there is no expectation, I guess. 4.77 was the previous uh, bond yield and 4.52 on a 10 year. So let's go to look, let's take a look on Wednesday. We have PPI, producer price index. And again, that's that's actually interesting. Uh, the previous PPI number was actually a negative, deflationary. Then 0.1% is the new forecast. So we're looking now, the expectation as a positive growth, positive being the numbers going higher, not positive for everybody else, but 0.1% actually growing PPI, producer price index, core PPI 0.2%. So 
PPI is important because this is what the price is paid from producers and uh, companies. And then, of course, if their costs go up, where do you think your costs are going to go? Yours is going to go up as well. Uh, remember, all costs get pass passed down to the consumers. And then at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, we have the federal funds rate. Five and a half percent is the expectation. There is not going to be a rate hike uh, or a rate cut. That's my expectation. And then at 2.30, we have Powell speaking. Will he comment on the last PPI, uh, the PPI number of that day? Will he comment on the CPI number? Who knows? But again, we know that when it comes to Powell speaking, the market's going to move. So at least we have you know, some opportunities if we get some volatility. Core retail sales, this is going to be helpful for Shopify. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Shopify is a Canadian company. It doesn't matter. The, it's all about perception. If we're seeing that retail sales are still going strong and people are still working according to the non-farm payroll report, then, of course, inflation might be going up a little bit. So uh, I'd prefer to see retail sales first. But uh, let's see what retail sales, if it's showing any kind of growth from this past November. Okay, we're, we're reading the last month. And then that's kind of like the pre-cyber sales and stuff like that. So maybe we'll see retail sales uh, actually going the positive, if anything. We don't want anything too positive. We don't want anything too strong either. But uh, negative core retail sales or retail sales across the board, I would assume gas prices is going to pull that back. The only thing that worries me is that if retail sales do drop off too much, then we're going to start seeing an impact in the labor market. And then we're going to see uh, labor drop off. We're going to see more unemployment. Uh, at least that's the expectation. And then, you know, the stock market guys, everybody, the ones who are expecting a rate cut, they'll probably get what they want if we start seeing the labor market crack a little bit. And a, a good leading indicator would be retail sales. 70% of our economy is really based on the consumer. The consumer ain't shopping. You're not going to get hired. You're not going to get hours. You're not going to get paid for your work or for more or additional work over time or stuff like that. So uh, something to look forward to, of course. And then we have flash services, PMI. Again, PMI is a survey purchase manufacturing index. Anything above 50 is an expansionary growth. Anything below 50 is more constrictive. It, it's pulling back. So Again, we'll see the figure. We'll see the uh, we'll see what happens with the market in response. Uh, but again, it's a gauntlet of a week, guys. We got to be ready across the board. Uh, some of the things I will be watching for. I really like the banks this week, especially with the Fed. I do expect that the Fed does pause. the The Fed, I mean, banks will not be affected by retail sales, but they will be affected by PPI and CPI and bond auctions. We need rates to go lower so we can get the back end boom for the banks on the refinances for homes. So they can take over some of those mortgages and, again, really get this economy uh, to the point where those who, are who bought homes in the past year can find some reprieve on those high rates. And, again, a rising tide lifts all boats in that, in that sense. Okay, so I, what else did I write down here? We previewed the next week. All right, let's go over rather quickly the S&P 500. Again, pretty much just chop. I know. Would I go long here? Um, 46.25, I, pref I prefer to go long there, especially when we have all of these uh, big economic uh, data points coming out. We need to be extremely careful. So again, I already have a couple of things open. Mara, of course, is uh, the stock that we have open and Shopify calls. So Mara above 17, we're about six cents away. We'll see if Bitcoin uh, moves uh, throughout the weekend. Bitcoin futures actually closed right above 45,000. So it hit 45,260 before futures closed for the day on Friday. We'll see on Sunday at 6 p.m. Uh, what happens to the uh, cryptocurrency and how it'll affect Mara and everything else. So a couple of names I want to look for this week. Let's do it. Boeing. Boeing, I was this close to filling. I really wanted to fill the break of 240, but again, didn't want to slash the tires, like I said. Already had enough uh, enough risk open. But I like Boeing here a lot. Another top 10 stock of 2023. Above 240, I was looking at the 245 calls to the 250 calls. It is not too late. We are just at a breakout. If we can get a little bit of a pullback to 241 and hold, I like 250 to 260. 260 may be a little too far out. So buy some time for 260. But 250 would be my strike that I'm looking for when it comes to Boeing. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that this upcoming week, especially with all this stuff going on. Goldman Sachs broke my alert as well. I like it up to 360, just another $10 move. This tests the July highs. This is on the weekly chart. Let's take a look at the daily. And again, you can see 
a little closer. Again, as long as we stay above 350, I like Goldman Sachs at 360. I didn't see any volume. Let's take a look at Boeing. Boeing for this upcoming week, the 250s close at 5,500 involved. So we're definitely getting some juice there. But the longer term expiry is not so much. Let's take a look at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, the 360s, 1,000 involved for this week. So not tons, not tons of vol. Um, that's actually the target, 360. So on Monday morning, we'll see how the 10-year, uh, we'll see how we open up. If we get Mara and if we get some kind of big boom with Shopify or something, we'll take that. But if Mara opens up very strongly, we can kind of close that for a good amount. If Bitcoin continues to run higher, then I would definitely look at Goldman and Boeing as my next uh, stocks to trade. So look, those are those are two. And then one more is Apple. And I wish I sent this. If Apple can stay above 195, then you could target 198 and a quarter. But the 200 calls for the following week would be not bad, maybe for the, for the same week. But again, that's a $5 move. It is breaking out. Again, this is the high from June. We retested it again, and then we fell back down. Now we're starting to kick. 198.23 is the all-time highs for, for Apple. That's the money target. 198.50 to 200. Let's take a look at Apple together. 197.50 to 200. 34,000 involved. 77. 10,000 involved for the 29th. And then you have uh, 205 as 4,000. So you know, the 29th of December doesn't sound terrible for the 200. That's tons of volume and you got a lot of time. Uh, so Apple, again, as long as it stays above 195, I don't want it to retest here. Well, 194.39 is fine. Let's say we get a little bit of a pullback on Monday or something. These three stocks are going to be something that we're going to watch in the coming weeks as we expect Santa to come down the chimney and bless us all with some stock market gains. That's what we're looking for. But we need a lot of uh, things to work our way. Remember, we got CPI on Monday. We got PPI on Tuesday. We got the Fed on Wednesday. We got retail sales on Thursday. We got PMI on Friday. Oh, that's right. It's also OPEX on Friday. Options expiry. Uh, the good news is that I got some data points here. December triple witching day, S&P up 26 of the last 40. Again, it is a bull day right there, if you can see it. You can see the witches right here. That just means triple witching. There's a little bull right there. It just means bullish. Historically speaking, above 60%, 65% of the time those days, uh, December 15th uh, would be strong. Uh, I got one more here. Triple witching week. The S&P is up 28 of the last 38. In 2018, one of the worst Decembers of my life, actually, 2018, down 7.1%. And then Monday before triple witching, the S&P is up 13 of the last 22, the 2018 month of December, or that Monday, excuse me, was down 2.1%. So um, the expectation is that we go higher as, as we can see that risk assets like Bitcoin are going higher. That's just what it is. VIX continuing to get smacked down, uh, down 5.44%. And we talked about that on the morning note as more of the complacency meter than anything else. And we are starting to break down. One more uh, nugget, one little piece I want to go over here is the dollar. And again, I've repeated it over and over. We need the dollar to break down if we want continued stock movement. Yes, the dollar was up on Friday and stocks went higher. Yes, I'm all for it. But if we really want to rock it higher, we need the dollar to break below the 200-day and sustain. We only had one day that we were below there. That was on the 6th. And then the 7th, we did bounce about, I don't know exactly how much we went up, but 103.98. So... We need to get below 103.58 for continuous movement. The dollar will be on the move this week with all this economic data. So this past week was not the best. Uh, I definitely have a high expectation from myself and the team. 0 for 1, better than 0 and 2, 0 for 4, 0 for 5, or 0 for 7, obviously. But if we can make that up starting out with Mara, and I do think that if Bitcoin continues to soar during the weekend, we get to around 47.5, 48,000. I know it's a big ask, but... We know what Bitcoin can do. We can see Mara really gap up to around 20. And then that'd be very nice to make up for Qs and to start our week on the right foot. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm glad that we're in it. So hopefully it does work out. We've done well in the past. And uh, let's see what we get this week. And then on Sunday night is the Cowboys and the Eagles. Huge, huge game, as you know. Huge Cowboys fan. I'm really hoping that we go ahead and kick their ass, man. I can't wait. I want this. I want this win so badly. So if I'm on, if I come in on Monday for the morning note and I'm in a bad mood, you guys will know why. It's because the Cowboys lost. But 
I digress. Have a great rest of your weekend, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, my name is Carlos Garcia, founder and CEO of Gar Capital. Again, I'm honored and obviously humbled to talk to you every single time that I can to talk about this stuff. The fact that you guys even care what I have to say is extremely humbling and stuff. So thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your weekend. I will see you guys Monday, bright, bright and early, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the morning note. Cheers all.